NBC presents transcribed short story. Tonight, The Windfall by Erskine Caldwell. Erskine Caldwell is one world-renowned for his stories of American Southern mountain folk. But like any really good writer, Caldwell is able to recognize the common bond of humanity in any people, regardless of the accident of their geography. He illustrates this point well in the story we are to hear tonight. A charmingly warm tale, not of the South, but of down East. Here is The Windfall by Erskine Caldwell. From the beginning, it was an extraordinary affair. Not since the summer, when the northern lights had been mistaken for the dawning of the Day of Judgment, had there been such excitement in the town of Brighton, Maine. It had begun early that morning when a lawyer came all the way from Portland to deliver to Waldo Murdoch a check, an inheritance left to Waldo by his long-lost brother in Australia. Desi, Waldo's wife, was at the beginning the most level-headed of all. She maintained her mental balance... At the start, anyway. She even remained at home and tended the chores while Waldo was away in Waterville cashing the check. Now, while Justine, the hired girl, was churning in the kitchen, Desi talked at the phone, which had rung constantly all morning. That's right, Fanny. Waldo didn't even know he had a brother in Australia until the lawyer from Portland walked in and handed him the check. Waldo's over at Waterville getting it cash right now. Oh, no, no, we don't know how we're going to spend it yet. Oh, uh, Fanny. Uh, Fanny, I got to hang up now. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Justine. Justine, I wish you wouldn't sing. It makes me nervous. Oh, goodness me, Miss Desi. I was just singing because I was so happy for you and Mr. Waldo coming into all that wealth. <laughs> What are you going to buy for yourself? When the check's cashed, if it's not worthless, and it'll be a wonder if it's not, there'll be ample time at hand for me to go out of my way to think about it. Right now, it's nothing but a scrawl and a promise on a slip of paper. Hmm. Mr. Waldo's taking a right long time to cash it, ain't he? You suppose something's happened to him? Oh, I don't know. Sudden wealth will do peculiar things to a man. Waldo Murdoch is a peculiar one to start with. Justine, ain't that butter come yet? Uh, try pouring some ice water around the churn handle. Already tried that. Goodness me, I know what I'd do with all that wealth if it had dropped on me. I and Carl be married in no time. That's all it's holding us back. Money. If you're hinting at anything, Justine, you can just save your breath. Well, goodness me, I was just thinking that with all that you and Mr. Murdoch have had will to you... I and Carl could borrow a little bit without you missing it. Well, now, let Carl Friend make his own money. Me and my husband have worked hard all our lives for what we possess. It won't hurt Carl Friend to do the same for you if he wants a family. Mm, I was just thinking I worked for you for six years without asking favors. I didn't think you'd miss a little of all that big inheritance from Australia. Oh, you mind your own affairs, Justine. Besides, Carl Friend can get money from his own family if he wants to furnish you a house. Those friends have made plenty of profit in roof tinning in the past. Oh, they won't help any, Miss Desi. Well, Carl and I don't want to wait till we're old as the hills. Well, it don't hurt to wait a while. Mr. Murdoch and myself kept company for five years before we took the leap. Well, it sure is taking a long time to cash that check. Has Mr. Waldo ever cashed a check before? Oh, he's cashed many a check in his time. I don't expect he's having any trouble with the cashing of it. It's more likely that he's up to some devilment. It was late that afternoon when Waldo drove up to the dooryard and left the automobile standing there instead of putting it away in the shed where it belonged. When he came in the door, he looked at Desi for a moment, cocking his head a little to one side. Neither of them spoke for a while. Finally, Desi walked over to him and held out her hand. Guess I'll take charge for the time being, Waldo. Hand it over. Here you go, Desi, my love. Be handing me in any empty whiskey bottle. Go ahead, Pat. Have a bit. It isn't empty. There's a good snort left. <laughs> Desi! That's what I think of your whiskey bottle. Now hand over that wealth. Oh, that ain't my intention, love. I might have known it. And I would have if I'd only had the sense God's given most people. I've only got myself to blame. 
I suppose you didn't even try to cash the check. Now, there's no cause for a human to take on so, Desi. Everything turned out from here to there. I'm back again like it was made to order. Just listen to this pocket. And listen to this one. Is that all you got left of it? Some coins to make a pretty sound when you walk? No, love. I got here also something to make a pretty sight. You've heard of a wad of bills big enough to choke a horse? This one would choke a regular hiponocerous. Give it here. Let me see. Look. But don't touch, Desi. Money's frail stuff. Don't stand too much handling. Oh, Waldo, I never laid eyes on such an amount. Let's count it. Lay it out here on the table. I tell you, don't do to handle it too much, Desi. Anyway, the bank feller and myself counted it crossways and backwards. Waldo, I think you better let me look out after that money. It'll just burn a hole in your pocket. This is Murdoch money, woman. A Murdoch made it, and a Murdoch shall spend it. Well, all I got to say is I never thought I'd live to breathe the air of the day when a deceased Murdoch would have the decency to do the honorable thing with his money, even if he couldn't find means of taking it along with him when he died, which would be a wonder if he didn't try to do, and he probably did anyway. The Murdoch's always been great ones for the making of money. Yeah, all except one I could mention. Have you any more blood relations we've neglected to remind ourselves of, Waldo? Hmm. None I call to mind. Well, it seems to me that I recall your second cousin in Skowhegan saying that a Murdoch went to California mm-hmm. and prospected for gold. Well, it could well be. The Murdochs have been master hands at adventuring. It might be that he struck it rich out there, yeah. which a lot of people did, so I've read if reading can be believed. Now, if we'd have been more particular about your blood relations in the past, we wouldn't have to sit here now and rack our brains trying to call him to mind. Oh, I guess uh, I have no blood relations of the name of Murdoch that I could call to mind. Waldo, let me just hold the money a while. Love, I'm doing fair enough. Somehow, I I just can't believe it unless I touch it. You can take my word for it, Desi. It's money. Well, I think we ought to start making some plans about it. I got it all settled, Desi. Well, anyway, let's spend it sensible and not throw it away on trifles like a lot of people would. Who I could mention if I had a mind to. I've been thinking of taking a little trip, maybe. Always fancied going to a foreign place and watch the heathen dance on their grass shimmies. A and fur neck piece is what I've always wanted. I guess we can afford to have a good time now at our age. Maybe we won't be lingering here much longer, which would be a shame if we hadn't taken full advantage of the money by the time we went. I agree with you on that a hundred percent. Would be no sense in hoarding it, only to have it pass along to somebody else after we're gone. I can just see me now, walking in town, and everybody saying, Look at Desi Murdoch. Don't she look fine in that new fur mm. neck piece? <sighs> ah, another thing I always wanted is pearls. Real ones, like come from oysters. Yeah, well, tomorrow we'll settle all that. It's time now for rich and poor alike to get some sleep. Desi didn't sleep a single wink that night. For an hour after they'd gone to bed, she lay silently tense. Waldo didn't stir. Just before midnight, she got up as quietly as she possibly could and tiptoed furtively through the dark room to the foot of the bed where Waldo had laid his pants over the back of a chair. She trembled nervously when the coins in Waldo's pocket clinked against each other. And then, without losing any more time, she slid her hand into the pants pocket when suddenly... Get your hand out of my pants, Desi. Leave that money be. <laughs> I was only checking to see that it was all right. Well, now that you satisfied your curiosity, maybe you'll take your hand out of my pocket and go to bed. Hmm? Well, don't you think I ought to put it under my pillow, Waldo? Suppose robbers should come in the night. You go to bed, Desi. If any robbers come, I'll reckon with them when they get here. <laughs> Neither of them spoke as she lay down again and tried to make herself comfortable for the rest of the night. After that, both of them lay staring into the blackness of the room. Just as dawn was beginning to show the first signs of breaking, Desi once more slid carefully from the bed. 
and on her hands and knees, crawled toward the chair. As she was rising up to reach the pants, Waldo sat up erectly. Jesse! <laughs> yes, Waldo? I don't want to have to mention it to you again about putting your hand in my pants pocket. I had no such intention, Waldo Murdoch. I was on my way to the, the kitchen to start breakfast. Well, you just detour around that pair of pants on your way to the kitchen, love. Yes, Waldo. I'll call you when it's ready. When breakfast was over and while Justine was washing dishes to her own musical accompaniment, Desi stood at the window watching Waldo. He'd left the house carrying an empty coffee can. And now as she watched, he walked to the tool shed and came out a moment later carrying a spade. With the coffee can in one hand and the spade over his shoulder, he disappeared behind the barn. When he was out of sight, she turned to Justine and said, Justine, would you try not singing for a while? I got a headache this morning that was meant for a much stronger woman than myself. Oh, did you and Mr. Waldo celebrate last night? Oh, no. I just couldn't sleep. Mm. I couldn't sleep myself for staying awake wondering if you and Mr. Waldo might not like to help Carl and me. We could get married right away if we just had the price of a chamber suit. Justine, I'll tell you the truth. If it was up to me, I wouldn't mind outfitting you and Carl. But I've not yet laid hands on a piece of that money. Oh, we wouldn't need a lot. Just enough for a chamber suit. Oh, we'll see. But first I got to get a hold of that money. Oh, yes, it's put away in a bank vault, ain't it? No. My husband's got it in his pocket right now. I can't for the life of me figure out what he's doing out there behind the barn. Maybe he's burying it in that coffee can he asked me for. Here he comes. Out from behind the barn. And you're right. Oh. <gasps> He ain't carrying the coffee can. Mm -hmm. He's buried that money out there someplace. Come along now. Don't let him know we know where it is. Get to work. He's coming to the house. Uh, uh, you wash. I'll dry. Uh, pretend we've been working all the while. Uh, sing something, Justine. Uh, uh, rescue the parish and care for the dying. Snatch them and pity from the and the grave. We for the air and one lift up the fallen. Jesse! Oh, what you want, Waldo? Oh, I have some affairs to attend in the village. Well, will you be long, Waldo? Look for me when you see me coming. That I will, Waldo. Have a nice day for yourself, Desi Love. Take off and get yourself some fresh air for a change, why don't you? Now, whatever did he mean by that? Oh, well, never mind. Uh, Justine, leave the dishes. We're going to look for that coffee can just as soon as Waldo Murdoch is out of sight down the road. As soon as Waldo was gone, Bessie set Justine to digging right away while she looked the ground over carefully without finding a single trace of the hole she was positive Waldo had dug. After that, she too went to work digging methodically. Uh, oh, if I'd have had the sense God gave most humans, I'd have watched to see where Waldo buried that can of money. You sure would have saved some digger. Now, oh. don't stop, Justine. He might come back any time. Oh, I'm afraid I'm getting a blister. If you and Carl Friend are expecting any of that wealth from me, you'd better keep digging. Blister or no blister. Well, don't you fret, Miss Desi. I can't stop digging a minute. Oh, oh can't we stop and take a bite to eat, Miss Desi? We've been digging since breakfast. Must be close to two o'clock now. If it takes uh, from now till dark, uh, we're going to find that money. Uh, now get to work. Oh, my hands are raw, Miss Desi. I think my back's broke besides. Well, then try singing. That's what you always do anyway. Oh. You'll forget all about your back. Oh, work for the night is coming. Work through the sunny noon. When man's work 
is oh sing it again justine oh, is this oh what you want I don't think he hit it out here at all. We only got about another acre to go, Justine. I'm as tired as you are. This yeah, I ain't tired. I'm dead. Uh, well, I reckon you're right. We'll stop for a while, and if Waldo ain't back by then, we'll come back soon as the moon comes up. Couldn't see that can now, even if we hit it, I guess. When Desi fell on the bed, she had never before in all her life felt so miserable. Waldo still had not returned. And Desi felt so tired and so lonely that she wanted to cry. Just as she felt tears coming into her eyes, the phone began to ring. She lay motionless, too tired to move, hoping all the while it would stop so she could begin crying. Finally, she got to her feet and stumbled painfully to the phone and picked up the receiver. Hello? Is this Waldo Murdoch's wife? Yes. Then you'd better bestir yourself and fetch Waldo home where he belongs before it's too late. Who is this? What's all Waldo up to? This is Charles Mason. Waldo was over here at my place, causing a disturbance to my household. And if he was a Democrat, I'd shoot him myself, instead of turning the job over to his wife. What's Waldo up to? Hmm. I guess it's public knowledge by now that sudden wealth has gone to Waldo's head. But that's still no excuse for the way he's doing. What's he doing? He's befuddling Miss Wilson, the schoolteacher that boards at my house, into going away with him. He says he's going to Shanghai or off to Australia with him. Oh, he can't do that. That's what any average, normal, level-minded human being would think. But Miss Wilson is befuddled by his wealth. Looks like she'd be on her guard knowing she's associating with a newly rich. Ah, but she's too far gone out to listen to reason. Why, Waldo pulls out his wealth every few minutes and waves it in front of her. The sight of that big roll of greenbacks acts on her just like chloroform would on an average being. Now, I've done my... Did you say Waldo has a big roll of money? Greenbacks tied with a string around the middle? He surely has, Mrs. Murdoch. It's the biggest roll of money I've seen on a man since the Democrats took over. Now, will you come over and take him off my hands right away? Who let him be? I don't want part or parcel of him. He had me digging in stony ground all day looking for that money in a coffee can, and it weren't there at all. Let the school teacher take him. I've had my share and more of suffering. Now I'd be comforted to see somebody else with a goodly portion of it. Mrs. Murdoch, will you please... Sudden wealth will show up a man's true nature every time. And I'm glad I found out the true size and shape of Waldo Murdoch's nature before I wasted another single day of my life on him. You mean you're going to let him go streaking off to the end of the world with the school teacher? She can have him and welcome. Waldo Murdoch has a free hand from now on. Goodbye. Mr. Blanchard, this is Desi Murdoch. Ah, Mrs. Murdoch, allow me to congratulate you. I understand you've come into considerable good fortune. Good fortune, my elbow. I've come into a whole mess of trouble, and I want you to come over here. Well, I think you're wise to seek legal help, Mrs. Murdoch. Large sums of money can be a problem, and I've always said... How soon can you get uh, here? Well, I could call first thing in the morning. Oh, it's too late. I want you over here right away. Tonight? Now? Tonight, right now. I got the need of a lawyer, and it can't wait till morning. Very well, Mrs. Murdoch. I'll come immediately. While waiting for Thornton Blanchard, Desi paced up and down the hallway, her face grim and determined. When he arrived, she was at the door waiting for him. Blanchard hurried inside, and after a bow he kept in reserve for his most monetarily fortunate clients, he went directly to the table in the center of the living room. Eh, now then, Mrs. Murdoch, is something wrong? There is now, but it won't be much longer. Huh? Not after I set things right I should have attended to 20 years ago. Uh, go on. I want a divorce from Waldo Murdoch, and I want it in a hurry. How soon can I get it, or do I have to go find myself a better lawyer? Mrs. Murdoch, do I understand that right after inheriting all that wealth, you want a divorce? That's what I said. But why? Never mind my reasons. When I go to the store and ask for a pound of sugar, I don't have to tell the clerk my reasons for wanting it, do I? No, Well, but then I... go ahead and get me my divorce. 
Well, do I understand that you have grounds, Mrs. Murdoch? Of course I've got grounds. I've got all the grounds needed and a plentiful supply to spare. Well, what are the grounds, Mrs. Murdoch? Cussedness. Uh, am I to understand? Cussedness, write it down. That's what I said. Well, I don't know that the judge would accept that as grounds. I don't give a hang about the judge. It's my divorce, and I'll have grounds of my own choosing whether the judge likes them or not. As your attorney, Mrs. Murdoch, would you mind telling me in confidence on just what grounds you do base your contention? Waldo Murdoch tricked me. He made as if to bury the inheritance in a coffee can, but didn't. Then he went off and stayed all day, befuddling with a schoolteacher, mm. while I and Justine nearly broke our backs, digging in stony ground for the money. And has he in any sense deserted you? Oh, don't want that said. Never would live it down. And put in the papers that I want alimony. I want all of it. What do you mean by all of it? All the inheritance, naturally. It's going to be difficult, if not impossible. Downright difficult, Mrs. Murdoch. That's your job. I've worked hard for my living, too. It might be best in the long run to let the presiding judge set the sum you might obtain from your present husband. I'm afraid I wouldn't be of much help in that connection. When can I see the judge about getting the money? Tomorrow morning? Mm, afraid not. Your suit couldn't possibly come up for a trial until the next term of court. Uh, sometime next autumn, I would imagine. Next autumn? Why, Waldo Murdoch will have every penny of that wealth spent long before then. There won't be anything left for me to sue for. Mrs. Murdoch, let me speak frankly. Well, that's the kind of talk I want. In our present society, it is the wife's own responsibility to devise, instate, and employ methods, means, and opportunities for enticement. They will cause her spouse to desire of his own free will and accord to bestow, uh, shall we say, a single largesse, or as the case often is, continuing largesse upon her while united in wedlock. What does that mean? Well, as you understand, the average wife, to put it bluntly, by showering her favors upon her spouse, obtains in most instances a bountiful portion of his goods, chattels, and wealth... In some cases, benefits that, judged by worldly standards, are far out of proportion to the value of her favors, which she has seen fit Now, to... wait a minute. Huh? If that's who I think it is, I think I'll have a chance to bestow some of my favors on him in just a minute. Uh, perhaps I should take my leave. I, I could be awkward if no, you... No, 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 You just hold on to your seat now. Uh, all right. Evening, Thornton. Evening, Waldo. How you be, Thornton? Huh? Fair, Waldo. Just fair. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, you got your hand all bandaged up, Desi. Did you meet with an accident? Mr. Blanchard, as my lawyer, I'd like you to inform my spouse that I didn't meet with no accident. Oh. Oh, Waldo, I take it to understand that Mrs. Murdoch wishes me to... Understood, Thornton. Understood. And I'd like you to also tell him that I know where he's been and who he's been befuddling with, and that legal steps are going to be taken. Uh, Thornton, uh, I thought for a while today I, I needed to see you about a matter. Oh, that a fact? Uh-huh. That's a fact. Changed my mind, though. There's no need. Not now. Well, I'm glad you handled the matter without needing any help. Well, I decided not to bother handling it. I just dropped it. Glad to hear it, Waldo. Glad to hear it. Never resort to legal recourse when you can handle it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you heard uh, I come into some wealth by inheritance. I heard. Well, I was trying to figure out a way to have a good time and keep the money, too. <laughs> well, can't be done. So, um, I decided to get shed of it. You got shed of it? Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Blanchard. Hmm? Ask my husband where he got shed of that money, too. Oh, I didn't get shed of it yet. I got it right here. Huh. Here you go, Desi. The whole roll's there. I figured I'd get shed of it to you. Waldo! Well, I figured a man with no more sense than I got ought not to be allowed to possess that much wealth. So I decided there was only one thing to do, and that was to turn it over to somebody who knows what to do with the dollar. It makes me feel better to be shed of it. It's yours, Desi, the whole $350 of it. Uh, did you say $350? That's right. I was under the impression you'd inherited a fortune. Well, that's a fortune to Desi and me. Ain't it, love? It's considerable wealth, all right. Well, I suppose neither of you is any more use for me. 
I'll be saying good night. Good night. Good night, Thornton. <laughs> well, love. I'm glad you're home, Waldo. Now, blast me to perdition if I ever go off befuddling on you again, Desi. Oh, Waldo, Charlie Mason said that you and that school teacher... Well, the mind was weaker than the eye, Desi. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. We was near gone to Australia until she said she wanted me to give her the money to carry. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm sorry I, I tricked you and made you do all that digging. Oh, Waldo, I, I needed that exercise out behind the barn. It did me a lot of good. What? What's that? Oh, I never heard such a racket. Robbers, maybe. Oh, hide the money. I got it hid. I'm sitting on it. Oh, Waldo, Waldo, reach for the gun there behind you. Well, there ain't a shell in the house. But I'll just hold it. <laughs> I come in. Evening all. Oh. <laughs> Justine, I thought you were in your room asleep. I had a date. What was all that racket outside? Oh, that was just I and my boyfriend saying goodnight. <laughs> Mr. Waldo, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't hold that gun on me. i never done a thing wrong in my life. And... Oh, <laughs> excuse me, Justine. You see, I wasn't expecting you to walk through the door. You ought to have brought Carl on in with you. I started to, but he gets kind of shy around people. <laughs> he sure wasn't shy out there on the porch. Uh, uh, Justine, come here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Justine, I think it'd be a good thing if you and Carl Friend went ahead right away and bought that chamber suit you were speaking to me about this morning. Here, I want you to take this. The whole $350. Oh. Miss Desi, you found the coffee can. You went back out and found it. No. This money was handed to me by my husband. It's brought us nothing but tears and trouble. So maybe it wasn't meant for us in the first place. Ain't that right, Waldo? That's a fact, Desi. Now, uh, we'd like you to have it, you and Carl Friend, oh. so you can buy that chamber suit you want so as to get married. Oh, Miss Desi. Mr. Waldo, I, I can't ever thank you enough. No thanks do, Justine. Oh. We're glad to get shed of it. I'll tell you just one thing, Justine. Sudden wealth will show up a person's true nature every time. So spend it just as sudden as you got it. Get shed of it, and then you can't worry about it. You have heard The Windfall by Erskine Caldwell. Our radio adaptation was by Earl Hamner. In tonight's cast, the narrator was Gain Whitman, Justine Marion Richman, Desi Gail Bonney, Waldo Jeff Corey, Mason Tony Michaels, Blanchard John Stevenson, your announcer John Wald. The director of NBC Presents Short Story is Andrew C. Love. Be with us again at the same time next week for our production of John Galsworthy's favorite short story, The Apple Tree. This program came to you transcribed from Hollywood. Friends, here are a few NBC program notes. This Saturday, hear Jane Ace, disc jockey, Bob and Ray, and the Judy Canova Show, a trio of great comedy entertainment. Later, Grand Old Opry brings you Western music and the antics of Red Foley, Minnie Pearl, and Rod Brasfield. And then it's the Camel Caravan, starring Vaughn Monroe in a musical salute to Florida State University. And on Sunday, be sure to hear the premiere broadcast on this station of the Hollywood Star Playhouse, featuring Academy Award winner Jane Wyman in a letter from Laura. <laughs>